Welcome to the world. Your name is Albert Einstein. The year is 1879. You are born to a middle-class Jewish secular family in Germany. Spoiler alert, you will change the world. You just don't know it yet. Well, you don't have to be all snobby about it. At age five, your father gives you this. You start wondering, why does the compass point north every way I turn? There goes your first scientific inquiry, and this experience will make a deep and lasting impression. Entering elementary school, you feel stifled. The school system doesn't encourage originality and creativity at all. You're struggling to fit in. Your teacher even tells you, Einstein, you would not amount to anything in life, blah blah blah. Man, if only you could someday prove him wrong. Your friend Max comes over for lunch every Thursday. You enjoy the books he brings over, especially the scientific ones. Soon you start engaging in math, two years ahead of the school's curriculum. But heck, Max could be your mentor. He's a medical student and is 10 years older than you. It doesn't take long for you to surpass Max's knowledge. Then he starts introducing you to philosophy. Other kids at the same age are reading what? Pinocchio? Not you. Immanuel Kant is what you dig. What kind of 10 year old are you? In 1894, your parents moved to Milan. You're like 15 now. Sure, you're old enough to stay in Munich alone to complete schooling. But as usual, the teacher dislikes you. You try to reason with him, but I have committed no offense. But the teacher went, yeah, that is true. But you sit there in the back row smile, and your mere presence here spoils the respect of the class for me. He even low-key encourages you to leave. What a joke. The school system isn't the only thing you despise. There's also the military service, a civic duty in the coming years. What do you do? You pull the oldest trick in the book. Get a doctor's note, skip class, like permanently, make your way to Italy where you join your family and never look back. The plan works out. But what now, genius? You're now a high school dropout, a deserter, a national disgrace, and effectively stateless. Dodging military draft means you'll have to renounce your German citizenship. Your parents are not impressed. I mean, can you blame them? Seems like your elementary school teacher was right about you after all. Anyway, you still managed to graduate high school in Switzerland at 17. You also got enrolled into Polytechnic University, then graduated with a degree in physics at age 21. With your credentials, you thought you were gonna get a university assistant job no problem. That's not happening. If there's one talent you possess, that would be pissing off teachers and professors. One wrote you a bad recommendation letter. Yeah, you will not find any full-time job anytime soon. And you, Mr. Big Shot, will resolve to being a private tutor to make ends meet. In hindsight, you're probably the most underpaid personal tutor in history. Life is rough, but there's a piece of good news. Your Swiss citizenship application will be approved by next year. Boy, it's been two years of being broke now. A friend of yours introduces you to a full-time job as a third-class clerk at a Swiss patent office in Bern. Yeah, it has nothing to do with physics, but the job isn't too intellectually demanding, and you can use your spare time to contemplate about the universe. Congratulations, by the way, on your marriage to your university sweetheart, Malev Americ. And oh, you're a father now. After spending extensive time on your side project, it's time. Let's publish those four papers you were secretly working on. You were practically a nobody, but these papers will challenge the foundation of physics. In the first paper, photoelectric effect, you will show that light comes as a particle called the photon. On the second, you've proven something that people didn't believe at the time the existence of atoms. You even calculated the size of them. I mean, these findings alone would already be remarkable for any established scientist, but this is only your debut. Your third paper will show that energy can become matter and matter can become energy with a simple equation that will one day become world famous. E equals mc squared. Now this last paper is your most radical one, the theory of special relativity. Okay, let's take a step back. What do people do when they take a bus to work? Daydream? Take a nap? For petty mortals? Maybe. Not you. You would stare back at the clock tower from the city bus and imagine what would happen if the bus races away at the speed of light. In this thought experiment, the clock would appear to have stopped. You theorize that space and time are linked for objects that are moving at a consistent speed in a straight line. 
Whatever that means, it's not important. You're not even a scientist and this random guy just came out of left field with not one, but four groundbreaking discoveries. This will forever be regarded as your miracle you. You're 26 years old. Now, two years later, you're still a patent clerk. Though you rose from third class to second, you decide to embark on a new quest. You will try to develop the theory of general relativity. Do you know it means going against more than two centuries of conventional wisdom and also taking on your scientific hero, Isaac Newton? Newton's like God. Good luck with that. You're 29 years old, you quit your job at the patent office and become an associate professor of theoretical physics at Zurich University. Congratulations, after all these years, finally a serious teaching job. Oh, and you're having a second son. Another big break for you. This guy is Max Planck. He's the most respected physicist in the world. He's flying in from Germany to pay you a visit and make you an offer. Join us at the University of Berlin, Einstein. We'll pay you a ton of money and there will be no teaching obligations at the university so you can keep focusing on your research. How's that sound? Wow, you are stunned. But you choose to play it cool. Well, Dr. Planck, I appreciate your offer. Uh, why don't you visit the Swiss Alp for the rest of the afternoon? We'll meet at the train station by the end of the day. I'll be holding a flower. If it's a white, sorry, no go. If it's a red, I'm flying back with you. You've just slow rolled the most respected physicist in this field. The size of your balls. Lo and behold, you're now 36. Your life's work, the theory of general relativity, is finally completed and published. After centuries of dominance of Newtonian physics, you are now providing a radical new way of understanding gravity. A solar eclipse creates a perfect opportunity for an astronomer to confirm your relativity theory. It immediately turns you into a world celebrity. Sensational headlines are bringing your work from the scientific circle to the mass public. Not all understands your work, but it doesn't matter. You will go on tours after tours across the world. Fans and paparazzi will follow you everywhere you are. You say you're tired of all the attention, but deep down you ache for it. At 39, you finally divorce your wife, the mother of your two children. It was a long time coming. At one point, you even made a deal with her. Sometime in the future, one of my papers are gonna win a Nobel Prize. If you grant me a divorce, I'll give you all the prize money. Now, your wife has a physics background, so she knows your capability. But still, guaranteeing a Nobel Prize? Who does that? It sounds as arrogant as... Right, never mind. Nobel Prize goes to Albert Einstein for the discovery of photons. The paper you wrote like 16 years ago, when you were 26. You're now a Nobel laureate, which means payday for your ex-wife. Started from the bottom, now you're here. You're on top of the world, in and outside of your field. In this socially unstable time, you're starting to attract attention on your political stance as a vocal socialist and a pacifist. You begin to fear especially the growing nationalism within Germany. But are you sure you're not just over-worrying? Well, your worst nightmare just came true. Hitler rose to power. Jews are increasingly unwelcomed. This guy even put a bounty on your head. You want to try to talk things out with him? He seems like a reasonable guy. Okay, if that's what you want. This is your second time fleeing your birth country, and this time it's for good. But countries today are more than happy to grant you citizenships. I mean, who wouldn't want to take Mr. Einstein in? So you choose to emigrate to the US. You are now 52 years old. German soul begins its ruthless march of conquest and sets the stage for World War II. The year is 1939. World War II breaks out. You worried that Nazi Germany might be developing nuclear weapons. So you send a letter to the US President Franklin D. Roosevelt, suggesting them to make this thing called atomic bomb. It later morphs into the Manhattan Project and the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Beneath that sinister pall of smoke, the world's most destructive force has been unleashed, with what results we know only too well. Though you played almost no role in the development, this letter will become your biggest life regret. Had you known that the Germans would not succeed in producing an atomic bomb, you would not have lifted a finger. Seven years flew by, you're now 73. One day, the Israeli ambassador in the US shows up at your door and offers you the most random job ever. 
As you know, Israel's first president just died, and we'd want to see if you're willing to be our new president. And of course, you'll be offered freedom to continue on your scientific activity. Um, it's definitely a white flower this time, sorry. Three years later, a blood vessel burst near your heart. When asked if you want to undergo surgery, this is what you told him. I want to go when I want to go. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. I have done my share, it is time to go. I will do it elegantly. As usual, you dictate your fate, even to your death. In the morning hours of April 18th, you die at the age of 76. I'm sorry to say, drama doesn't end with your life, bro. Before cremation is carried out, this sneaky pathologist is carefully picking your brain, quite literally, hoping to study it in the future. Your son will protest about it, but he's too young to understand his rights. Your brain becomes a wandering relic contained in different jars. I hope you're cool with that.